Hey guys, someone pointed out this tweet to me by Wes where he made a auto completion form as you can see right here or input field where he's typing and then you can click on a little item and it auto completes um, using downshift which is, which is a new library uh, by PayPal uh, to do auto completions like this and he used GraphQL which I thought was really cool. Now he didn't leave any code on how he did it. So I thought I would show you guys how I would go about building something like this. So the library that he's using is called Downshift, and this is relatively new. I think it just came out or got its first version, I'm not sure. But here it is, and here is what the code looks like for just a little hello world for the autocompletion. So it's this one component, and then you have basically a function you put inside of it and it returns the items. So here's what apples orange carrot would look like with this. So basically what I did is I took this example here and I added GraphQL into it and I did it in two different ways. So I'll show you the two different ways I did it and the advantages of both. So here we go. Um, here's the little input form right here. So let's clear that off. So here is what it looks like. So I have uh, just some random names for books here. Um, I'm storing all these in a Postgres database and I can come over here and click which one I want, gambling, or I can type and it'll filter for me, right? Um, or I can say wolf, I can do it, click, and it'll autocomplete. And you see it in the console log down here. So pretty cool. Let's see how this is happening. So here is the code right here. You'll notice it looks super similar to what he has. Uh, I find it helps to start from the bottom, so let's start there. So here we have a search uh, component, and you can see this is the basic autocomplete. That is something that is straight from the example of downshift, but you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm doing this all books query, and I'm feeding it into search. So this query is getting run when this component is mounted, and then it's just passing all the books that it gets from the query into the basic autocomplete and it's autocompleting those books. So right now I'm autocompleting on 10 books and you'll notice all the filtering and stuff is happening in memory in JavaScript on the client side. So I fetch all the books, um, or I'm fetching the books, 10 books that I want to do for the dropdown. Um, that's what this is doing. It feeds it in to the basic uh, autocomplete. So, and then of course on change, we're just console logging. So let's take a look at this downshift. So we have this get input props, get item props. These are both things that we just put into the input and the um, basically our little menu window. We just spread the props. You'll notice how we're spreading them here and we're spreading them there. And you'll notice how we are adding the, um, the item itself, the name of it. Um, and you'll notice how we're doing the placeholder here. We're passing those as parameters to these. So these are functions. So we're calling these functions which return objects and then we're spreading them um, so the props get passed to the input. And the reason for that is this function right here is going to return what downshift needs to control the input. Or not control the input but pass props to it. So all of this is doing is passing props from downshift to this input and this div below. Is open. This is basically just a function that's going to say whether the little menu is open and the input value is when they type. So input value here would be um, the letter A is the input value. Now the input value is AB and there's nothing there. And then of course it passes the selected items so you can do this little highlight thing that we're that they have going on here. Robots. So it tells you which one you're hovered over um, is highlighted and also tell you when it's selected. So you can come here and bam. Okay, so notice we're just putting the input props on the input here, and then here, this div, we're doing items.filter, and then we're mapping these items, which is pretty nifty. And uh, basically all we're doing is we're taking our initial items, which is 10 items, because I'm putting a limit of 10 here on my query, and um, we're filtering. So we're saying if it's a null item, throw it out, or if the item is included. Um, so that's what this is doing. It's making sure it's lowercase. So it's checking the title of the book, 
check and then making them both lowercase and checking its input value and seeing if uh, it's included. What I'm typing is included in the title and if it is, it keeps them. If not, it filters them out. And then I'm mapping. So each book that basically meets the criteria. So we're basically doing a linear search through the items and seeing which one fits the criteria based on making them both lowercase. And then we're mapping this onto a div. And as you can see, this is pretty basic. The div has a key, so it's unique because we're mapping and we're just putting a style on it. This is straight from downshift, the default style that he had in the example. And then we're just putting the title here. So that's kind of how this is working. Now I want to go over a few things. This is a cute little example with 10 items. What if I had a couple more items? So I actually, in my um, example, or my database, I have a, a, a thousand plus. So let's start with a hundred. Um, so we have a lot more, and you'll notice how we have this giant list now, which is kind of annoying. But you'll notice it's still pretty buttery smooth. Like, it, you're able to search it pretty fast. There's not any noticeable lag, and it still works just fine. But the most annoying part is look how it's stretched down, and you get this monstrous list. Um, one thing that you could do to just kind of get rid of that is once you filter, you find all the items that meet your criteria, slice it. So only show the first 10 results or something. Uh, or that's what we're doing. We only show the first 10 results. That way you don't have this monstrous list. So we're search still searching all the items here, um, or at least the 100 that we're pulling, but we're only displaying 10, which helps with just the load. It sh it it's not really lagging right now, but it helps with the performance and also doesn't do this giant list. Um, but let's, let's get rid of the slice, and let's go to 1,000. What you'll notice is when we're loading all 1,000 in here and then sorting them in memory, it gets pretty slow. Um, so you'll notice it just lagged for a second there when I deleted the, the D because it's searching the whole thing. Um, you'll notice this goes quite a bit down now, which is giant. But the biggest problem is really the rendering. N I mean, the initial data load is also pretty big, but the... Um, Slicing really helps out. So if we do that 10, and we only show 10, now we're doing, let it refresh. As you can see, this is nice, buttery smooth, even though we have a thousand items. So that's pretty nice. So even with a bunch of items we have loaded in memory, we get pretty fast search results. Um, so that's pretty nice. The con though, of course, is this does not scale. Like, sure, we're doing 1,000, maybe increase this to 10,000. We're not gonna be able to just search through this and it have a smooth animation. So I wanna show you an alternative that you can do where you actually do the search on the server. So this is search number two, and I'll show you that. So the way this works is every time you type, what it's doing is it actually goes to the server, fetches all the search results. So A, and again, I'm not slicing this, so you get all the results here. Um, but it's doing the search on the server. So every time I type a letter, it's searching the, the uh, server instead of loading all of them in memory in JavaScript and then searching them. All we're doing is sending this request to the server saying, they searched ADE, tell us what the results should be. So to do this, we have a search books query where I pass it in the title and it gives back the ID and title. So each time I type a letter, I'm actually making a GraphQL request. I just made a GraphQL request, here's another one and another one and so on. Uh, looks like I have duplicates, that's not good. Ideally you don't, but like when I was making my data, I guess I accidentally added some. But as you can see, as I'm typing, each one is a request. And so how did I get that to happen? So I have this item, items component, which is the search results right here. And this query right here, I'm feeding into this component. So as you can see with GraphQL, I'm doing search books query, 
and I'm passing, I'm getting the title from the props. So when I create this items component, I need to pass in what I want the title to be. It'll go ahead and fetch here. Um, and then what it's doing is it's just mapping over the results in a similar manner that this guy over here was doing. So instead of the filtering here, we're doing the filtering on the server, and I'll show you that in a minute. We're getting the results and then we're just mapping. So we're just mapping the results, but there's no filtering that needs to be done because the server is doing that for us. And so we're showing the title. And of course, if we're loading, I'll just show no, uh, null, which will show nothing. So let's look at the basic autocomplete now. You'll notice it's exact same except we're just doing fetch items here. And we notice we're passing in the input value so we know which title to search. And we're just passing in some props that it needs from downshift. That way it can communicate okay. You can see I'm passing in these three props. And then at the bottom here you'll notice nothing really has changed. Um, on change again, so when you select an item you should, would still see it here. So beekeeping and bam okay so as you can see though we're still getting a bunch of items it's not too slow right even with all these items even like that we're not slicing at all but you can make this even faster doing the same technique we did over there just slicing the results that way you don't render so much and maybe you don't do 10 Maybe you'll show the first five, maybe you search, do this for just 20, but don't render 100 search results, that's not gonna help anyone. So as you can see, as I'm typing, pretty fast results. So that's pretty nice. But, let's see. So every time the input value changes, we're passing that to fetch items. That is another GraphQL query, because when the props change, this will go ahead and call, recall this query for us. So if we just open up the network tab, this could be interesting. Let's refresh. We can see how many queries we're running. So we've done four, and I'm just gonna say, wow. You notice we're up to eight now. So we actually just did, what, one extra one too, but three letters, and as I'm so, so that's that was pretty cool. Did you guys see that? Um, as I was typing this, right, you'll notice how I've already searched WoW. So there's no more requests. Um, Apollo actually caches the request, which is really nice. So you notice requests no longer increase because we've already typed WoW before. So look how instant the results are. But you saw how I accidentally typed the letter O and the requests jump. Um, and then if I type something else like dog, you know the requests jump up. But see how many requests we're making um, when we type that. Now let's look at the server, how this is handling this. So here we go. I have two queries I'm using, this uh, search books and this all books. So search books, we're getting a title, passes back an array, and then all books is a key um, and a limit. This is for pagination. You don't have to worry about the key for now. But basically, I'm just limiting how many books they go back so we don't overload. So in our resolvers here, search books is pretty self-explanatory. Um, as I said, the data is stored in Postgres. So on what I'm doing is uh, I like with the title, which means find all the titles where it fits this pattern. And putting the percent sign here, it means match any characters before and after. So basically it's like an includes or a star character in Unix. Um, so any letters before or after, as long as it includes the titles, okay. So I'm finding all that match that whenever I do a search. And then all books, I'm using join monster to do this. Um, and then if we just go over to the metadata, we can see with the book, um, here we go. We're just limiting it. Um, and then we're doing a where by the ID if you pass an ID, but we don't go into that. That has to do with pagination. But the all books we're just doing a regular query for, whereas the search books we're doing a find and doing I like on the server. So this I like on the server side is something um, as opposed to loading it all in memory in JavaScript and then filtering it. But as you can saw, search wasn't too bad. Like this was not very slow. 
this was pretty fast even though we loaded them all like it might take a second to do that initial load like we just loaded all the books in but once we load all the books this is pretty fast to type like there's not a lot of lag because we're slicing but once you get you know scale up to higher numbers you're gonna need to run like for example Google it can't pull all the results back they have to do the search on the server um, so what they'll do is something like this where they make a request every time you type now Postgres might not be the best for doing searching through a database. You could replace this with Elasticsearch or something else as well. But this just gives you an idea how to do a GraphQL query every time they type using Downshift, which is pretty cool. So these are the two different ways you can go about doing um, this little auto completion. There could be more. I'm excited to see how Wes does it and compare it against mine uh, when he releases the code for it. Or maybe he has released the code, if you guys know. That'd be awesome. I'd like to see how he does it too. Um, my code is going to be up on GitHub. I'll have a link in the description below. Uh, thank you guys. Oh, actually, before I end, real quick, I'll show you the data. Here's the books, all the books I added. I have like this giant um, JSON list. And then all I'm doing is I'm seeding the database with a SQLize and I'm just doing a bulk insert of all these books and I'm mapping over them all, adding a create of that. Um, so if you're wondering how I got a thousand books, this is how I found, I just Googled a list of books and like pasted them here and then formatted them. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and check out the code.